Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome back to another episode in my football manager save. This is episode number 84. And still returning two games in the Bundesliga with Dortmund. We're still technically in the title race, but only if we win the remaining 11. Today we'll take on Freiburg and Werder in two of our final 11. Before we get to the games, though, shout out to getting on off camera. And there has been a bit of interesting transfer business, which I'll show you now, uh, starting off with a buyback. Uh, yeah, this is a young Togolese midfielder that Dortmund sold uh, before I arrived. And I was like, oh, look at him, to be fair. So I'm going to buy him back for just over a million. But he had a buyback clause anyway. So really, um, I think the net loss in the end was like 600k. So nothing really in modern day football. I just wanted him back in our academy, really, as it looks pretty decent, in my opinion. But uh, also, as well, the, uh, the big bit of business news is this. We are going to sell Tyler. Morton um, in the summer. Yep, the English holding mid has been here since I arrived. He wanted to leave. I said, I'm not going to stand your way. If you get 30 mil for you, I'll take it. And I did a non-negotiable uh, transfer dates in the transfer offer itself and said, I want to keep him till the end of the season. Then you can have him. And Stuttgart agreed to go in the summer to the Mercedes-Benz Arena for £30 million. Pounds. He's a solid little squad player. I like him, to be fair. And he is 28 in the prime of his career right now. But he was unhappy. And like I said before, we're a team in transition. So if, if players want to go, I'm okay letting them go. Let's just say that. And um, Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. That's the players leaving. But um, yeah, uh, so there you go. Uh, right. Right, so uh, in the run of camera, uh, of course, we won our last two games on camera, the victory over Dusseldorf and the away against Stuttgart. Uh, four games and we won them all 100%. Uh, started off with a win against Mitch and Gladbach where Romero uh, scored both goals. Stefano got his first assist since arriving for that big money signing from Hellas Verona. Uh, he got the assist for the first guy and Romero converted from the spot in a 2-1 victory. After Mitch and Gladbach got him back in the second half, but it just proved to be a consolation. Araujo went down. I was thinking, right, next three games are going to be tough here without the top scorer in the league. So I put company up top and Anthony was like, it ain't going to be tough. I should be our starting striker. Never mind a left winger. Uh, he was amazing in this game. Uh, Schlotterbeck gave us the lead five minutes in, heading in his first goal of the season, making it 1-0. And then Anthony scored two goals in six minutes and said, whenever Enrique's not in the team, Put me up top, Gaffer, because I'll get you the goals. He scored two in six minutes, and uh, Giovanni wrapped it up. We scored all four of our goals 25 minutes into the game, and then just controlled the victory uh, from that point onwards. Uh, following that free will victory home to Schalke, we fell behind, actually, right before the break. Really unlucky goal, though. Massive, massive deflection. And I said to the boys at the break, lads, you've been unlucky. Like, seriously, don't don't worry about it. We're down by a goal. We're playing really well, and the goal we conceded was a deflection. Don't worry about it. Second half, the boys played about pressure, and they got the free goals to turn the game on its head. Company scoring a rebound goal to Romero got our second and Patrick Miller bagged our third, basically going all the way himself with 90 minutes to go in a 3-1 win and our final game was a big thumping 4-0 victory at the Olympia Stadium where we ended the second half just absolutely dominating. We scored three of our four goals eight minutes before the break. Uh, Salah Ozcan, who came back into the team after a brief injury, uh, scored our first goal, a nice little slot into the bottom corner at the near post. Um, then Company scored two minutes later, Lacha onto a free ball. Then Oscan converted from the spot and then two minutes after the restart, James McAtee heads in off the underside of the crossbar to make it 4-0 and whilst Hertha did grab a consolation goal late on, it's all it proved to be. So, the winning run continues, the unbeaten run continues, haven't lost since that by Leverkusen game and you know, like I said, I don't mind losing these games. I don't mind losing these games at all because these are the best two teams in Germany, in my opinion, right now. Bayern are the most dominant. Bayern Leverkusen, I'd say, are slightly better than us. And I'll back us to win the remaining, or most of the remaining fixtures in the season. So, so far, so good. That's what's been happening, and that's why right now we're in second place. We're, we're still in with a shout of winning the title. We're nine points behind Bayern, and we do have the game now. We still have a very outside shot, but really, what I'm thinking about is this. Bayern, I'm not, I'm basically right, I've got like a, I've got a piece of paper and I've sort of covered the top part of the league table. So basically we are, we are top of the league table outside of Bayern basically. I want to see us try and hang on to second place. We're 12 points behind Dusseldorf with a game in hand and we can go 15 clear if we win this one with 10 to go. So yeah, I'm just worried about here to here. That to me is my league title in season one. Also, uh, that Tommy Yasu deal did fall through in the end. So, yeah, the Japanese international stayed at Arsenal. I, I don't know if they have a uh, contract extension in his, um, 
in his contract. I don't know if they have one. Oh, they must have done. Yeah, they've, they've, they've well, they agreed a new, oh, they just agreed a new one. Okay, fair enough. And that's got an option one year as well. So Tommy Yasu isn't going to come in the summer then. What I was going to do was try and sign him in the summer once he goes down to a free agent so I can get him more reduced wages. But instead, he's going to stay at Arsenal. Fair enough. We're only going to bring him for a backup anyway, so I'm totally fine with that. By the way, for those wondering how Bournemouth are getting on, sixth place. They're on a pretty decent season though. They're only three points behind the Gunners right now in a Europa League spot. They could still possibly catch them. No one's going to catch Man City this season. They're running away with it in the Premier League. But Bournemouth right now, they're still in a European place. Go on the Jerrys. And um, yeah, their team now looks like this. They have had a big clear out ever since Unai Emery took over. Look at the business they did in the summer. They had a monster clear out. And I don't really know why because I left them in a really healthy position. But obviously, my, my final bit of business, by the way, before I left Borussia, uh, left, left to join Dortmund was signed Zvonarek. So he was my signing. I bought him in and Unai Emery just not really played him. But yeah, I, I signed Lovro. That was my final bit of business um, with Dortmund. But for this season, you'll see they've brought in Owen Vindal at left back to replace Tyrek Mitchell left on a free. They've brought in Sergio Com Mello, uh, who scored 11 goals in seven starts in the Premier League. Very impressive, to be fair. They brought in Iesa, a, uh, a backup goalkeeper for Manuel Dashvili. They brought in this lad, Vicandi, who's a uh, Spanish striker. So it's a bit of a Spanish sort of takeover of Unai Emery. And also Curtis Jones is, uh, has come in as well and been pretty solid. If you see the outgoings, massive clear out. Paul Jenkins went to West Ham. Jenkins. Uh, John West went to Leeds, two of the, uh, the OG Season 1 Academy graduates. Fernandes and Zverskov, they're both for the Bundesliga at Wolfsburg right now. We know the day is a really talented young forward. Um, uh, and where's the big sale? Uh, oh, there he is right there. Alex Scott. Alex Scott, he sold to Barcelona on the cheap for just £22 million pounds. Unbelievable. Oh, and Scott tomane has been loaned out as well. So, yeah, big departures here at uh, at the Eddie Howe Stadium. Since Unai Emeraz came in, he had a massive clear out. I don't really know why, to be fair, but uh, there you go. But Kazada is still there for now, for those curious. He is nursing an injury. Spurs were interested. Oh, they got some big interest now in the Chile and the real deal. He's probably going to go in the summer, I think. But um, yeah, hopefully, at the very least, they'll allow him to stay there until he gets that homegrown <laughs> trained at the club, because that's one of the main reasons I bought him in at 18. Anyway, that's how born for getting on. And uh, for Dortmund, well, we know if we're not to win the remaining 11, we won't be champions. That's the only way we can win the title. Win the remaining 11 and just hope the buy and slip up. Right now, an injury report. Uh, Reina is down with sprained ankle ligaments. Uh, Stefano's down since that uh, that win against Schalke. And uh, Araujo has been down as well since that win off camera as well. This will be his first appearance coming back if we bring off the bench. This is our team. 43 on Cabells and Garbutt for his next. Schlotterbeck, Creswell and Bradley with the Dragon and Oscan as DM Joe. Vimmer on the left, Romero on the right, and McAtee Sports Company. On the bench, you've got Olszewski, Flavio, Sul, Mulan, Morton, Santos, Obradovich, Brunner, and Araujo as well. First to two, Freiburg at home. Any chance of us being in a title race means we have to win our remaining 11. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, I'd like to push Bayern and put a bit of pressure on, if nothing else. Do you know what I mean? If nothing else, just, just stick tight to them. We're probably not going to catch them, but just stick tight to them, you know. But, uh, yeah, like I said, at the moment, this, this to me, the league table sort of starts from second place in the Bundesliga because of how do dominant Bayern have been. Like, second is like the rest of the teams in the league's league title position. Do you know what I mean? As company goes down the left and the first chance falls early with Vimmer taken down by our former centre-half with Bournemouth, Velazquez, and a penalty for Dortmund. It seemed like he won the ball cleanly, to be fair, so I wonder if that'll be overturned. It seemed like a good tackle from the Colombian. It goes to VAR. Does it stand? It does. It's a penalty, and Ozcan will take it. He netted one against Hertha Berlin at Olympia Stadion. Can he convert his third from the spot this season? It's Ozcan. Who doesn't? Denied, still no no. Yeah, Velazquez um, was one of those players we had at Bournemouth. I never really believed was going to make it with us, even though he's still very young, only 23 now. Got some good stats as well. He's one of those players that I was like, yeah, you never know. Like, he could turn into a good squad player, but that's the absolute best for Velazquez, I felt. I never felt as though he was ever going to be like a starter in our team as the years went by. As he loses out in the air. And that's one of the reasons why at 5 foot 10, he's not the tallest. And I didn't really feel as though with the lack of jumping he's got as well, he could make a mark at centre half. But in the Bundesliga, he's doing okay. But it's still nil nil here, as we're deadlocked heading into the break. I think I think top four is basically at this point ours to throw away from here as company is the bar. But to catch Bayern Munich now, yeah, we have to be literally perfect from here on out. So 
So second half begins as we're still tied at 0-0. Didn't go harsh on the boys at the break. No need to. We're playing well out there. And I say it all the time. If you're playing well, just don't have the rubber the green so far. Back your boys. Like, seriously, they'll, they'll get the goal at some point. And right on cue, we've done so. James McAtee makes it 1-0. At the break, I, I just said to the boys, we're doing well. We're doing fine. Like, we've created lows. The scoreboard just doesn't reflect that. We're doing fine. I really do feel as though in FM, like, you know, if, if you are doing well and you're just still tired at 0-0, haven't had that breakthrough yet, you're on top, but the goal is coming. Don't don't criticise your lads. Just, just back them, you know? Relieve a bit of pressure. And it'll come good in the second half. Oftentimes, it happens for us this season with Dortmund, and it's happened once again. James McAtee would finish 1 0 Dortmund, and now he can play without pressure and try and get a second goal to wrap this up. Romero's had a court, but I think we'll get a second goal not before long. No one likes to be criticised, especially when you're actually doing the right things, you know. Sometimes you can be doing really well, but the results just aren't coming. But it's okay. Like, don't be too critical on yourself, man. Like, seriously, a lesson for life as well as sport as well. It's tough, man. Like, life is tough and it's unpredictable. Sometimes you can be really, really working hard, doing the absolute best you can, and it's just not showing. The results just aren't there, but just go go easy on yourself, man. Like, seriously, go easy on yourself. I know what I'm talking about. We're leading by a goal, though. McAtee hits the bar. I'm pretty sure a second goal is coming right now. It's been it's been a training exercise for the most part out there. The only way Freiburg get back in this game is if we allow them to get back in this game. We're still up by one, but I, I feel a second goal is coming not before long here. Connor, up you get some. No, nope, Oscan will do it for you. And now Romero takes over. Down the right-hand side. Back to Charlie Creswell. What a season, by the way, Creswell's had. Coming in from Leeds. Spent 36 mil, I think it was. He's been absolutely solid at the back alongside Schlotterbeck in his first season outside of English football. Give Charlie some credit, man. He's adapted to life in the Bundesliga perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. Bradley to Vimmer. And Pat over the top. Company's onto it to make it two. Bottom corner. And I think that'll stand there. We'll go to VAR, but he looked onto me. Anthony with a finish. Another one for the young Spaniard. And I think Dortmund are going to take a 2-0 lead nine minutes after the restart. Yep, don't even need the VAR. Yep, I always say it if I can see it. Just take my word for it. 2-0 Dortmund. And this could be free. Romero fires home his eight for the year. And this is what I mean, man. When you're doing all the right things, you're just not getting your awards. Don't be critical on yourself, man. Give yourself a bit of praise. Even if the results ain't coming in, if you're working hard, if you're doing everything you can, you just haven't had the rubber to green, relax, you know? What a finish, Romero. Just be kind to yourself. Hashtag be kind. Not just to others, but to yourself as well. Lesson for life, Darren. Lesson for my boys today. We've played well out there. Didn't want to go harsh at the break because they were doing well. And now we're freeing it up inside the first 15 minutes. Brilliant, brilliant start to the second half. And three goals to the good here as we look for a fourth. Luca storming down the left-hand side. Nets, fantastic run by the left-back. Back to the Dragon. And he'll find Ozcan. Nods on to McAtee. There's Romero. Oh, night for the year for Luca Romero. He's been brilliant. And that is going to do it. Deadlocked at the break. But we run out comfortable victories with three goals in 15 minutes in the second half. And Dortmund... Continue to keep their slim title hopes alive with a really good second half display. The winning run continues. The unbeaten streak extended. Six point gap on Bayern. It's, it's definitely still possible. But we know we're going to require A, beating them at the Allianz. And B, them slipping up once or twice as well. I think top four now is all but guaranteed. 15 clear of Dusseldorf. Ridiculously better goal difference record as well. But... Um, yeah, I think top four now is basically all but confirmed. Whether we can catch Bayern or not, I'm not too sure about that. Charlie Creswell, by the way. What a debut season at Dortmund, honestly. And what a decision to bring him in as well for 36 mil, I think it was. Yeah, 36 million. He's been safe as houses in that back line alongside Schlotterbeck. We're going to need a long-term successor for Nico at some point if I keep the dragon at DM. But... Creswell's going to be my leader in the back line as time goes on. He's already learned fluent German as well. He's um, he's just absolutely loving life here. He's um, he's now got his first three caps for England as well since coming in. So the move's been beneficial for him and us as well. Charlie Creswell, he's, he's been a brick in our back line, man. I absolutely love him. So we're also going to loan out one of our youngsters, uh, Luis Flavio. If you remember, we, um, we picked this guy up at the start of the season and... Um, He's just been chirping ever since he came in. Oh, play me, play me. I'm like, bro, like, you're a decent young player, but you're not going to take Luca Nets' place. 
you're not going to take Charlie Creswell or Schlotterbeck's place at centre half. Like, wait your turn. Like, you're 18 years old. Wait your turn. You're going to get a bit of game time here and there, but mostly just learn your craft under some great youngsters. He's been chirping ever since, and now he's unsettled and he wants to leave. So, fine, I'm going to loan him out to China. We'll get a small amount of money for him. It'll ruin the homegrown status, but uh, do you know what? Fine. I don't, I don't have any business in keeping unhappy players here, unless they're like a captain or like the best player in the team. Look, I'm, I'm here at Dortmund and things are changing. No doubt about it. We're getting them back into big time. And if people don't want to be on the journey, fine, they can get off the train. So, second and final game, Werder Bremen away at the Vezza Stadion, uh, heading into the game. All the teams around us won uh, over the weekend. So, Dusseldorf, uh, Leipzig, Bayer, and Bayern with another win as well. So, yeah, at the moment, we know that Destiny's in their own hand for the top four, but in terms of winning the championship... I think Bayern are going to be invincible, you know. I really do. They've won 22 or 25, only drawn three times as well. I think if Bayern are going to not be invincible, it'll have to be us or Leverkusen that stop them. And those two games are coming soon as well. So unless Bayern or us can beat them, I think it's going to be an invincible season and 19 in a row for Bayern Munich. They are just too good. For us, though, we're just focusing on trying to stay in the top four. So heading into the game, on the back of the win, I'll stick with the same team and the same tactics. So once again, it's Kamerl in goal. The back four of Nets, Schlotterbeck, Creswell and Bradley with the Dragon and Oscar and DMG. Vimmer on the left, Romero on the right and McAtee Sporting Company. On the bench, Olszewski, Sule, Moulon, Morton, Santos, Obradovich, Brunner and Araujo as well. Second and final game, Werder Bremen away. Win this and we're... Oh, oh I can't. Can I? Am I allowed to go back? Oh, thank God. <laughs> I forgot to put someone else on the bench after loaning out um, loaning out our, uh, our youngster. Ma go on. Off you go, Maximovic. Why can't I? Why is it not working? Why is, is it too late? Have I already... Have I already? Oh, it's too late. I can't drag him on. I can't drag him on. It doesn't matter. I think we'll be right with just the eight subs. Come on, Borussia Dortmund. That's one of those lack of awareness moments in FM when you're, you're setting your team for the match day squad. We've all had them. We've all had them. How many times have we forgot to take our cup girl goalkeeper out for a league game? Do you know what I mean? Big six-pointer at the top and you've uh, you got your backup goalkeeper because you had an FA Cup third round tie the weekend before. We've, we've all had those moments, haven't we? Still Dortmund in front with company getting another one. It will go to VAR after Vima played the ball over the top. But I think, yeah, it outstands. And it is 1-0 four minutes in. It's 16 this season for Anthony Company. And this young Spaniard is an absolute baller. Whether he's on the left or on the right, you can hit the ball with either foot or leading our line. This guy always gets me a goal. Yeah, he's one of the players where when I arrived, I was like, okay, all right, this is the one. Do you know what I mean? Is the dragon. Oh, how's he missed? How's the dragon just missed? Two yards out. That's one of the worst misses I've ever seen. The dragon from two yards out has just put the ball over. How did he get it over the bar from that distance? That's what I want to know. Goodness. He's just pulled off a Craig Gordon-esque save where he's clawed the ball up and over the bar from basically underneath it. That's extraordinary. I'll try and leave a link to that save in the description if you guys haven't seen that. It's one of the best saves the Premier League has ever seen. It was an unbelievable save for in a positional uh, sense to be able to get the ball over the bar when the ball's basically on the goal line. How has the Dragon just pulled that off? Why does he somehow put the ball over from two yards? Even so, leading by a goal on right now, we're in control. Top, top four now is looking like a formality here. We're going to go 15 points clear again, nine games to go. It's it's basically done now. And we're very little to report in the second half. We're almost there, 12 minutes to go. Werder Bremen looking for a late point, but as Charlie Creswell commands that ball in the air, I think if anyone's going to get another goal, it will be us in a game. We have dominated. Oscan over the top. Vimmer is there, and that will do it. Lovely ball by Oscan. A veteran in his team who will definitely be staying with me until he retires, because I really like him. And Patrick Vimmer has got his, uh, what was that, ninth goal of the year? I think I've read that. Ninth goal? I'm not too sure. But even so, great ball by Oscan. Vimmer over the top, and a great finish on the half volley. 2 0, points in the bag. Well, Werder Bremen looking for a, uh, a bit of a miraculous. Come back in the late stages here, but as Romero wins it back with a press, that was great work from Luca. And away we go on the break. Company finds Vimmer, the goal scorers, attacking down the left hand side. Pat, wonderful dribbling, whips one to the back post. Romero controls, gets it on the deck, takes it around his man, and makes it free. Tenth for the year for Luca. Game, set, match. Dortmund are going back in the Champions League. My job as Dortmund manager in season one was to get us back into big time, and it seems as though we're nine games to go. It's basically now being confirmed. We will continue 
continue to push Bayern Munich, keep the pressure on and hope that they will finally lose for the first time this season. But we know even if we don't catch the most dominant team in Germany for over two decades, that would be fine. That wasn't our goal in season one. Our goal was to be in the top four and remain in the top four. So far, so good. And we are now, I think, just two wins away from confirming it. Nine games to go. We've got, uh, what are we now? A uh, 15-point gap. Two wins. Three. I think we need three wins, actually, to do it. But we, we know, basically. There's a very little chance of us dropping out of the top four. Now, the question is, can we catch Bayern? Well, we'll return with them in the next episode. We'll play three games off camera and come with our first trip to the Allianz Arena, Bayern Munich away from home, and then Bayern Leverkusen, our closest threat to the second place trophy, if you will, in the Bundesliga. So three games off camera, and then we'll come back with these two here. So have any chance catching Bayern, we'll need to be perfect in our final nine. Guys, thanks for watching, much love, and I'll see you for the next episode of the eighth, no, ninth season of the Football Manager Save, and the penultimate episode of season nine as well, very soon.